Truth number one. I am a new soul. Well, my soul may have been created 200 odd thousand years ago. But this is my first life. In April 1976, my parents consummated their love and created a little body and a spirit body. And my half of the soul decided to attach to this body. So my half of the soul wasn't exactly keen because there had been millions and millions of people born for, before this time. But my soul decided, or maybe didn't decide, maybe just standing in the queue. Way back in the queue. Oh, God decided. God decided. No, this soul... You should go to that one. Or it was my turn and I thought, oh, I fancy this one. Anyway, I don't know the answer to that. As my soul was unconscious. But anyway, that is what happened. And I started growing in my mother's womb. She was a good mum to pick. Good Norwegian grown up with good food and good fresh air and exercise but had decided to come to England and then my the other half of my soul was thinking right he's gone there I'd better find somewhere but I can't really talk for the other half of my soul as I haven't fully reconnected with her yet so I'll just concentrate on my soul. So I was growing in the womb and you know the summer of 1976 was very hot. So I must have been very warm in that place. Warm and snug. Probably very comfortable for me. And my dad I think freaked out as he did with my older brother and sodded off to Africa for six weeks. <laughs> But obviously he came back. And in January 1977, on the 9th, in Maidstone, Kent, I plopped out of my mother. And there I was, defenceless, just taking everything in. For the first time, smelling air. <laughs> And hearing voices that weren't muffled anymore. And seeing. Seeing just what wasn't a red thing. But actually seeing my mother's face. And my father's face. And my older brother's face. And then I would cry because I was hungry. I wasn't being fed by the placenta anymore. And I needed milk and I would suck on my mother's boob <laughs> to get milk. And all of this must have been quite amazing, but quite scary too. Because if anyone left me alone, then I couldn't get what I needed. But I know my mother used to put me outside in the pram to get the fresh air. And at that stage, I was probably well connected to God. Some fears had started to attach themselves to me. But probably pretty alright as upbringings go. I know my pa parents had liked to have lots of parties. I don't know if they calmed that down a bit. I doubt it. There was probably loud music, which I think I probably liked. But that was it. That was the first time I'd experienced anything. I'd never been on the pl 
planet before I'd never existed anywhere before well as far as I knew anyway this was the beginning of my life my potentially eternal life potentially because I think you can possibly completely screw it up it may take you millions of years to get yourself into such a poor state that you pray to God to extinguish your soul and hopefully that won't actually happen to any soul because that would be very sad indeed for I could not think to cease to exist no <laughs> no I cannot cease to exist so then I started to get a bit older and I could walk and started to play with friends and look at girls and and by this stage my parents will have damaged me slightly but it wasn't really their fault because they were damaged by their parents and they were damaged by their parents and if you go back quite a few generations life was pretty barbaric and you had to grow up and be strong and so the parents would make their kids stronger by giving them hard lessons and this life of hard knocks that they had to come but if we go back generations and generations and generations there was error on this planet from the beginning error because without error how can we learn how can we learn wrong from right if we've never experienced wrong? What would you rather do? Would you rather experience all the right things and then have to learn errors? Well, I'm someone who likes to save the best things to last. So I think I'd rather learn the errors first. Then, then learn what's right. Yes that makes sense to me what's interesting though is that for hundreds of thousands of years humans have been living on this planet and when they died they've gone into the spirit world and they're still there all the great people you can think of are still there all the insignificant people are still there all the slaves all the masters all the women and all the men, everybody, they're still there. There are, though, a handful who have come back and they are in their second go. Now, they did this out of love, for they got to such a high place in the spirit world, they could have really begun to enjoy life as a soul and learn from God. But as part of God's plan to help us out, because we needed a little bit of help, out of love, they came back <clears throat> to share these truths with us that we're hearing for the first time. For all this past time in history, no one's come back. So we've always been guessing as to what's happening, what's going on now thank God the truth is here it's here for us if we want it and I'm so grateful for that and then then it makes me wonder well maybe I did choose this life maybe I did choose this time think well by the time I'm 37 the truth will be accessible via the internet from this Australian guy who's called Jesus in his first life and has come back to share the truth with us and well if I had got onto the Paget messages earlier I could have had some of the truth not quite as clear as hearing it from the horse's mouth but I could have had some of it but now it seems almost inevitable that I would have got this truth as I am a truth seeker I've always been a truth seeker and I've always kind of felt that I should have time on my hands should I want to delve in and find out the answers because I've been looking 
I've been looking, I've looked at everything, and I've looked at everything with an open mind as well. I have a YouTube channel I call myself Faithful Philosopher. I've tried drugs, I've tried this, that and the other, and I did take a particular liking to cannabis. Cannabis was a drug that was pretty cool with me, it was natural, and hey, it made me feel good. Hey, and guess what, ever since I've learned the real truth, wow does it get me high. But now I'm having to come off that, because knowing the real truth, I know it's an artificial high. And I know inevitably I have to come down from it, and it's not very pleasant coming down. So now I'm down on level one where I ought to be, but with these truths in my hand, I will live each day as it comes, and I will progress. Slowly but surely I shall progress. From the teachings of Jesus himself, dealing with my emotions and facing my fears, with truth, with truth, with truth.